Hi everyone, welcome back to another video for Fantasy Star Portable 2 and Portable 2 Infinity. In today's video, we're just going to pick up the, the playthrough of the series. And in the last episode, we investigated the in-help facility where there'd been a rampage of monsters, which we've successfully repelled, but we've now been told that a lot of the machinery has now gone haywire as well, and particularly a command machinery called Real Badia. So in today's episode, we're going to try and go and put down Real Badia and put an end to this um, out of control machine. So just a couple of things before we get started. I have played a little bit off camera and all I've done is I've just increased our gear a little bit. So what I've done is we're still limited to using C rank weapons, unfortunately. I have increased our ability to be able to use B ranks on this class now. So um, if we do find any B rank guns, we should be able to use those. It's just that we can't actually buy any in the shop at the moment. Next up, we do actually have a B rank armor now. And we now actually have a SUV weapon as well. So that's the main differences so far. Amelia has already forgotten that no one else can see Mika. I, I kind of get why she's raised it though, because obviously if she starts talking to Mika, it's going to look really weird. <laughs> So obviously we could destroy the subspace generator which would stop the plans of that guy in black that we saw a few episodes ago. However, we are also working for Inhelt in this mission and they probably wouldn't be too happy about us destroying their generator. So we're kind of at this, this juncture at the moment where we're weighing up the needs of what we need to do long term compared to what we're doing short term for Little Wing. And for the time being, it's probably best to keep Little Wing on our side. So I'll say Kraz won't be happy. Yeah, we'd essentially be classed as terrorists, really, by, by doing that, so it's probably a really bad idea at this point. So I guess Miku is concerned that the, the subspace generators could potentially give the, the humans a way to reach where the ancients are resting. Yes, so once again, just in case anyone didn't see the last episode, Mika is, because she's an ancient being, only Amelia and me can see her. So Tonio and Lena, to them, it would just look like we're talking to ourselves. So this is actually one of our first actual boss quests. So although we've fought kind of mini bosses in the past previously, this is the first quest we actually fight a proper boss, I think. I 
suppose we technically fought Dragon, but that was in a like a side quest. It wasn't actually part of our um, actual story. These robots are actually really annoying. Is the self destruct? So the one big downside with this new B rank armor is the fact that it's ground element. And basically yeah, basically everything here is lightning element, so everything will do more damage to us, which is probably a really bad thing. So we do need to be careful of that. You can see we are getting beaten up quite easily. The problem is these robots, they actually do like collision damage to you. So just by hitting you sometimes, they'll actually hurt you. to get a B-rank weapon, that would be quite nice, but no such luck yet. have to go down there just to trigger this enemy spawn. I'm assuming this will open up the switch after we defeat them. Annoyingly as well, these guys are also resistant to bullets. It does kind of feel like the early stage of PSP2 is very, very anti-ranger, which is not particularly good news for us. So we froze the the lake that was down here and now we can actually walk on it. Looks like the evil sharks are back. all evil sharks that's fine because these aren't too bad we can handle evil sharks I do love the music in this area, but it's really, really good. I'm just not a fan of most of the enemies here. don't really have a good buster yet we need if we get a ground element one i'll use it or an ice element one for that matter unfortunately the way this map is it just it does get things stuck very easily
Right, so that was our SUV weapon. I really don't know if this is one of the better ones to use at the minute. I tend to prefer the ones that use the missiles instead from PSU, but I don't know if we had access to that yet. Okay, so now we get our, I think it might be our first introduction possibly to um, like champion and buffed enemies. So these guys, you can see, have got much bigger guns than normal. And under their name, you can see there's a little um, red sword symbol that appears. And that means that they're essentially like champion enemies that do the basic increased attack power. There are also ones that have increased defense. There are also leader ones that just take reduced damage as well. All right, so I guess we need to find another switch to get rid of that water. Which I'm assuming is this one. I don't really know why it needs to show us a cutscene every single time. Like we've seen it once, we probably get the you know we get the gist now. <laughs> yeah, these guys are really really irritating. So whenever they spin, they just they hit you repeatedly. The problem is they move faster than you. doesn't help that they do more damage to me than normal as well with me using ground element armor. <laughs> Unfortunately, at this stage in the game, this is the only B-rank armor I can use. And the reason I need to use B-rank armor is because the SUV weapon is B-rank, because they're the lowest rank SUV weapons. So because of that, I have to use... You know, I actually have to use B-rank armor. Gonna set my NPCs to heal just so they can support me a bit better. So it does feel like the game is a little bit anti-ranger at this point, just because it feels like a lot of the big enemies in particular are bullet resistant. But in this stage, even the, the regular robots are bullet resistant as well. There are enemies in the game that are melee resistant and tech resistant though, so it isn't just against rangers. Now we've got pal sharks. If you time a shooting well on those guys, you can kind of flinch them consistently and stop them from shooting you. So we do need to be a little bit careful of these turrets as well. Those enemies are also champion ones well, so I do need to be very careful of those. Back down with an SUV actually just to get rid of them. Yeah, I think I'll be ditching this SUV after this and go for something else. <laughs> it's really not very good. It is being quite generous with the uh, the monomate drops though, which is quite good.
the shotgun does seem to be our best option here for the most part. I will say that I feel that the difficulty in the game does ramp up quite a bit, like quite quickly in some parts, and this is one part where the difficulty does spike a bit. These guys, I, I really don't like them because you can't hit them for ages when they spawn. For some reason, they spawn, fly around for a little while, and you can't target them. So you have to wait probably about a good five seconds or so before you can actually target them. Okay, so we do have these crusher things on the on the map, so we need to be a little bit careful here. Pretty sure these boxes are safe to check. Okay, so we need to go this way for the key, I'm guessing. So PSP2, it does tend to incorporate a lot of things like environmental traps as well. Again, these, um, these Grinner Beats, again, are bullet resistant. So again, we just need to time this. I think the easy way to do it, honestly, is just follow this one round. I think if I tried to skip through, it might have been a bit tight. Although we're not doing a great deal of damage because these are bullet resistant, because we're using the shotgun at point blank range, we are getting a few hits in at once, so it, it it's not as bad as it seems. These are super annoying with the machine guns because they actually stagger you and prevent you from doing anything. Yeah, that SUV is terrible. I think these Grinner Beats, they're not too bad when there's just one on their own. But when there's a couple of them at the same time, they become a little bit annoying to deal with. struggling a little bit for accuracy as well actually we are missing a fair bit so maybe I need to uh, put an accuracy unit in my armor quite glad that went that way It 
it's a little bit easier if I can get a good chain on them and get the charge shot off. I haven't been using the charge shots, that's blame me playing PSU as well. Because I've been playing PSU, PSO and PSP2 on and off and switching between the three games. <laughs> you always forget what you can do in each game, what you can't. Okay, so this this reeks of boss, so I'm assuming this is gonna be where we fight real bad here. I really can't remember how to fight this boss at all. It's like our first proper story boss. Well, actually, I guess I guess we had the cash boy, didn't we? But the Akasuma is a proper boss. This guy definitely is. So I'm going to assume that's the weak point. I cannot remember this fight at all. It's been years since I've done this. I do kind of remember this, though. Yeah, that just brought back horrible memories of this fight, actually. Get a little bit of damage on the car while we can. So I guess the, the strat with this fight is just attack the legs until the car gets exposed. I think he's doing the blades on his legs again, so we'll, uh, we'll move away from that. Okay, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. I'm sure I remember more to that fight. Maybe it gets another phase at some point, but I'm sure I remember more to that. <laughs> I think we got lucky with the SUV weapon there, honestly. And we actually S-ranked the story mission for once. <laughs> Yeah, so if you remember, Krasid basically told Tonio and Lena to go with us because he didn't trust us to go on a mission on our own because Amelia was essentially talking absolute nonsense to him. <laughs> and he kind of thought Amelia had just lost her mind. Yeah, real groovy. <laughs> well, to be fair, Amelia, he didn't get stuck in a wall, so well done on that.
リトルウィングの皆さんどうもありがとうございました先ほどこちらでも全マシナリーの停止を確認しましたもしかしてインヘルト社代表の夏目周さん Oh, so, this guy is the head of the corporation that we took the job for? Ah, hi. So, no, no, no. 皆さんの迅速な対応がなければ装置などが損傷し悪空間研究に致命的な遅延が生じたかもしれない<笑>改めて感謝いたします、well, hopefully this will make Kras think a little bit better of us <laughs> い,いやそこまで丁寧にされてもしかしインヘルトの社内で悪空間の研究をしてるってのは意外だったかなあれだけ騒がれてる計画だしもっと誰も近寄れない場所でやってるものだと思ってたこれでも警備は厳重な方なのですが今回に限ってはその厳重さがあだとなってしまいました Yeah the security measures didn't really help you much though did the <laughs> 空間やその研究のことについては俺はよく知らねえんだが実際どんなことしてんだ Finally someone asked the real questions We've talked about this subspace stuff、uh, quite a lot of the game I don't think it's ever really explained what it actually is <laughs> ここには前に見つかったレリクスやその他のレリクスから発見された旧文明の遺産が集められていますはっきり言ってしまうと悪空間は旧文明にすでに発見されていたテクノロジーなんですよ。悪空間研究とは、つまるところ、旧文明テクノロジーの研究でもあります。Yeah, so they're investigating the ancient civilization and the ancients themselves, which obviously Miku is one of those ancients. あの、そんな重大な話、私たちが聞いちゃってもよかったんですか<笑>公式にも発表していますからねシードの脅威を乗り越えたグラールには未来を託す子供たちがたくさんいるのですその子供たちのためにも今グラールが直面している資源枯渇問題への対処法は何としても見つけなければなりません Yeah, so again, right at the start of the playthrough, it mentioned that after the seed were repelled in the events of PSU, there was a massive resource problem across the Goral system. A lot of places are really struggling to get resources together for anything. And it's now starting to have a really big impact on the Goral system as a whole. So I guess the way that Inhel are looking at things is if they investigate subspace and investigate the ancients, they might uncover something that helps them with deal with the resource problems that we're facing. So on the surface, it seems like a good thing. まあ、確かに資源の枯渇はかなりやべえ問題だしなそれを解決する糸口がその悪空間の研究にあるってならこの大げさっぷりにも納得がいく代表さん貴重な講話ありがとうよ悪空間研究ってのは無事完成するといいなそれじゃ仕事も済んだし、あたいたちはこれでほら、エミリア、行くよえ、あ、うんほんとに、あぶないところだったな悪空間研究を、早く完成させなくては父さん、今のはおお来ていたのか
取引している軍事会社リトルウィングの皆さんだよ Yeah, so he's obviously concerned about something now, whether he was just concerned about the security systems failing them or whether he's concerned about something else, we can't really tell at this point.、Um, but there is definitely something going on within health. Machinery no boss or tomate crepanda. Little wing, this guy. You may be familiar with that voice if you watch the playthrough so far. All I'll say is that, that that voice that you heard there has appeared in the story previously. You can probably put two and two together and figure out what's going on. <laughs> so let's go and see what Kraz actually makes of what we did. I doubt he'll even believe that Amelia actually did something good. <laughs> I like that Amelia's first response is just to assume that she's done something wrong. <laughs> Does anyone actually want to speak to us?、Uh, it doesn't look like it. I will just go and see if Tonya wants a word though, because sometimes he's in here. No, so it looks like we are just meant to go to Kraz next. So, Amelia's just gone into this meeting with the impression that she's just going to get, you know, another Rolkin from, from Kras because it's all she's used to. But he's actually like, no, he did brilliant. <laughs> And I'm going to assume that's probably because he got paid well. Yeah, Amelia's like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, so she was actually saying that. Oof. <laughs> that, that is just unnecessarily harsh. Yeah, she's so used to getting yelled at by him that she just assumes that every time she has a meeting with Kraz now that it's because he wants to yell at her. <laughs> she still sounds like super nervous and super like, unsure. Like, even when he's offering us something here, she's like, I don't know if this feels right. <laughs> yeah, she just seems completely baffled at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I 
クライアントも感謝の印として追加報酬をたんまりと出してくれたしな。はもううかがらぜ。Yes, as I thought, it is merely because he got paid well. これで俺も久々に酒を浴びるように飲めるってもんだ。Which he is immediately going to blow on beer. <laughs> Classic Kraz. じゃあな、お前らもちょっと羽伸ばしたりして休んどけよ。<laughs> I like it. He said, Oh, yeah, he's going to bathe in beer. <laughs> But no, he said you did a fine job. Still, just in utter disbelief that Kraz has actually complimented her and thanked her for a job well done. <laughs> yeah, that is quite cute. We'll just congratulate her. She's obviously on a high at the minute. You see, he said it's all thanks to me. I don't remember me getting a bonus. I remember you getting a bonus. <laughs> Where's my bonus? So we've got some more missions on the terminal. So we've got Endrum Remnants, uh, Multiped Threat, which I think is the real baddie mission. Desert Goliath, Valley of Carnage, Secret Society. I'm sure we already had Valley of Carnage before. Maybe we didn't. Yeah, so I think that probably seems like a, a good place to end this one for today. So we managed to repel the, the machine threat and save in help a corporation from having a massive security problem and more importantly save their subspace generator project so we still don't really know what's going on within help corporation we know that there's more to it behind the scenes than we're aware of and we also um there's this mysterious person who's within help as well which again if you've watched the series so far you might have an idea who it is so in the next episode we'll see if we've got another job to do from Kraz, I'm going to assume that it's just going to ask us to do a open quest next. Yeah, so it just says take Amelia on an open mission to help her celebrate. I don't really know if that's a celebration taking you on a mission, but there you go. So yeah, we'll end that one there for today. If you enjoyed the series, um, this series goes live to members only initially. So it will normally go live to members on a Monday night. And then it normally goes live to everyone else, usually on the Wednesday occasionally on the Thursday. There's usually a couple of day delay between it. So if you do want to see this series in particular first, feel free to join as a member. Also feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff. I do a couple of videos a week and I normally stream once on a weekend on a Sunday as well, where we normally stream Fantasy Star or occasionally other games like Monster Hunter. And you can follow me on X at Section Skyline and we also have a Discord that you can join as well, which I'll put in the description. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.